Hey Tri-State, I am really excited to be with you guys tonight for our second Easter devotional. Uh, our hope in this really is to just have an opportunity to refocus our hearts and our minds uh, on really the cross and what this holiday is all about. It's so easy for us to, to think about Easter eggs and Easter bunnies and Easter baskets and all the things um, that gets thrown up on, on a TV or, or commercialized. Uh, but the reason we celebrate this holiday is because of what Jesus has done on the cross for us. Uh, and that's an amazing uh, truth. That's, an, that's the best truth that we could possibly uh, have. And so tonight, uh, I'm going to focus on this question of, do we really need a Savior? And in a, in a world that really doesn't have much room for, for Christianity now, uh, nowadays, uh, this is a big question for us to focus in on our desperate need for a savior and why do we need a savior? Um, this isn't just for uh, uh, um, people who don't come to church. This is for everyone, the recognition that we need a savior daily. Um, every moment of our lives, we are in need of a savior as we're broken, as we're struggling with the things uh, of our sin nature and, and, and the things that the world throws at us. Uh, we can't take this on unless Jesus is in our lives doing a work and, and, uh, and giving us the, the strength and tools that we need. Um, and so, we're going to unpack this concept. Do we need a savior um, through this next uh, uh, little bit? And um, in Romans 3.23, it talks about how all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We, we all have a sin nature. We all do things that are wrong. And, um, and so what does that look like for us? Because we need a savior, you know, what did the cross accomplish? And uh, so let's go ahead. We're reading uh, Romans 5. We're going to start in verse 12 as we work through our devotion today. Uh, it says this. It says, When Adam's sin, sin entered the world, Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. So just in that little simple passage, we have this recognition that because of the actions of Adam, because Adam came into this world and he sinned, now everything has been corrupted. We have all sinned and our punishment is death and we need a savior. And so just as we need a savior through one man, as this passage continues, we're going to see what Jesus comes in and he does for the world. It says, yes, people sinned even before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break. See, even though there wasn't a law established, it didn't mean that we weren't still corrupted. When sin entered, it tainted everything. Brokenness came in. The, the world became imperfect. Humanity became imperfect. Creation became imperfect because of this sin. Does it doesn't mean that that uh, if if a law says um, we you know if a law doesn't cover one certain thing that if we do that certain thing it's not still wrong you know uh, if my son still tells us that he made his bed but he didn't make his bed that's still wrong right even though he's not going to get arrested he'll just get yelled at by me um, still everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now, Adam is a symbol, a representation of Christ who is yet to come. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace in his gift of forgiveness to many through the other man, Jesus Christ. See, the correction was made. Jesus was always the plan. Jesus was always the answer. Jesus was always the solution as a perfect human, fully God, fully man, coming to sacrifice for us. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God even though we are guilty of many sins. There is nothing we can do to earn it. There is nothing we can do to obtain it. There is uh, um, on our own power. There is nothing that we can do 
to make ourselves right unless it's through Jesus Christ. Guys, a, a free gift means there's nothing that we put towards it. There's no value that we can give to trade in in order to receive this. It's simply a matter of going before the cross and believing what Jesus did. Uh, for the, the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Guys, we can have victory if we focus on this Savior. We can have victory if we put our lives at the cross and seek that forgiveness that's free. We don't have to be controlled by anger. We don't have to be controlled by pride. We don't have to be controlled by all the different areas of sin that grab a hold of us in the, the little dark places that we may not even tell people about, or maybe it is out up front. We don't have to be controlled by those things. It says God's power is so much greater than our sin. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sin more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is no sin that we can have present in our lives that God does not forgive. It doesn't matter how much you've done wrong. It doesn't matter the times that you screw up over and over again. If we lay our, our lives at the cross, if we lay our lives at the foot of Jesus and we desperately seek out his righteousness, his forgiveness, and we turn our lives to him, it says we have new life. We now have eternal life with Jesus Christ forever. What an amazing truth. I, it is such a hard thing as humans to be able to forgive people for certain things, and, and yet the power of the cross that dwells in us allows us to be able to do so because Jesus came in and forgave us. In, in, in chapter 5, verse 8, backing up from where we, we just were, it says, But God showed us his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Not while we were trying to make amends, not while we were trying to earn our, our keep, while we were still at the bottom, while we were still at our worst, he sent his son to die for us. What an amazing truth that is. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. We'll be saved from that judgment that we, we so often fear, that judgment of, of, of coming before with, with all the things that we've done wrong and people just telling us you're not good enough. Christ says, no, because you're not good enough, that's why I came. Man, that's incredible. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Every day we need to be reminded of this truth. Every day we need to be reminded of how desperate we are in need of a Savior who can strengthen us and, and, and empower us to take on the world in a way that points people to Christ, in a way that points people towards this righteousness, in a way that points people towards eternity with God as opposed to eternity apart from God. 
I heard a quote recently uh, this, this past week. Uh, it says, we are incredible sinners in need of an incredible Savior. Man, how important that truth is in our lives today. I hope that this was something that is encouraging you for this week. I hope that this is something that challenges you to think through, am I really seeking God as Savior in my life? Am I really seeking God to come and take control and and to make me new on a daily basis? I hope and I pray that together we can understand this truth in our lives that we would encourage each other to walk together in this truth, that we would encourage one another to share this celebration, this truth, this gospel to those around us in this season and beyond. I'm I'm so glad we got to have this time together. Uh, This coming Friday, uh, we will have our Good Friday service here at Tri-State Fellowship Live. And you can also view it on our YouTube channel, uh, TSF YouTube channel, at 7 p.m. this Friday. Uh, We hope to see you guys there. God bless.